Welcome to the two-part episode of the series Fairfax County Stories by Lady Fairfax 2009, Filipino-American Corazon Sandoval Foley. It is focused on a project that I initiated on July 4, 2010 to install a historic marker for a lovely church in Burke called Little Zion Baptist Church that will celebrate 120 years of history in 2011. I have developed a two-part series on the project. The first part to honor Black History Month in February 2011, and the second part to honor Women's History Month in March 2011. Part one is aimed at honoring Black History Month in Fairfax County. It discusses the 1891 founding of Little Zion Baptist Church, along with the history of the Coffers, the Pearsons, and Reverend Lewis Henry Bailey. The church was built in 1891 by an African-American community on land willed in 1861 by Francis Coffer IV, one of the richest landowners in Burke at that time. He also belonged to a most prominent founding family of the Burke area of Fairfax County. Francis Coffer IV gave all 374 acres of his land at the beginning of the Civil War to his slave woman Phyllis and her four sons. I later found testimony that Francis Coffer was the father of the four sons, William, Jack, Charles and Joshua Pearson. Jack Pearson in 1876 donated land that became home to the Little Zion Baptist Church and Cemetery. The church was blessed with a remarkable founding pastor, Reverend Lewis Henry Bailey, a freed slave who became a founding member of five churches. His inspiring life story is commemorated at the Slave Pen Freedom House in Alexandria, and a visit to that museum is included in part one. I then concluded part one of this two-part series by placing my local historical research in the context of ongoing research on African American history in Fairfax County and Northern Virginia. I will then share with you parts of the November 13, 2010 conference at George Mason University on African American history in Loudoun and Fairfax counties. Part two is aimed at celebrating Women's History Month in March 2011 in honor of two remarkable women in the family of Reverend Lewis Henry Bailey founding pastor of Little Zion Baptist Church. We will discuss the importance of education and the history of the Pearson College School that was built on land donated in 1874 by Jack Pearson. We will then meet Reverend Bailey's sister-in-law, Jenny Dean, who founded Manassas Industrial School for colored youth. That school provided high school education for African Americans in Fairfax and other Northern Virginia counties that refused to build a high school for the black community during the era of segregation. It was not until 1954 that Luther Jackson High School was built, the first black high school in Fairfax County. And you will also meet the daughter of Reverend Bailey, Annie Beatrice Bailey Rose, who was a noted philanthropist in Alexandria, Virginia. And you will learn about the continued progress of Greater Little Zion Baptist Church 
which grew from the original Little Zion Baptist Church. In particular, I will share with you stories from the wonderful centennial celebration of the church in 1991. I hope this two-part series will encourage you to learn more about African American history in Northern Virginia, and in particular, will encourage you to support and to join the 2011 celebration of the 120 years of Little Zion Baptist Church in my Burke neighborhood. I should note that Little Zion Baptist Church has also become home to an Asian American Presbyterian Church. And this continuing evolution into a dynamic, multicultural megalopolis is really the most fascinating story of our home, Fairfax County, Virginia. And it is a privilege to tell those stories in this series. With the strong support of Fairfax County Chairman Sharon Bulova and Braddock Supervisor John Cook, I have been involved since July 2010 with research for the historic marker, including library research and visits to cemeteries, churches, and museums. The story of Little Zion Baptist Church begins in 1861, when Francis Coffer IV willed his lands consisting of two parcels, one 300 acres and the other 74 acres, to his slave woman Phyllis and her four sons. William, who was born on October 24, 1825, Jack, who was born on May 4, 1828, Charles, who was born on February 18, 1831, and Joshua, who was born on December 1, 1831. Why would a prominent white landowner give all his property to slave woman Phyllis and her four sons? A visit to the Virginia room gave me the answer. A former library employee, Brian Conley, had drawn the family tree that shows the relationship between Phyllis and Francis Coffer IV, and that the four sons were their children. This means that the Pearson brothers are part of the fifth generation of the very prominent Coffer family to own property and to live in the Burke area of Fairfax County. The 1910 Fairfax County history included the coffers in its commendation of founding family with the following words, coffers, triplets, turleys, Paines, Elsies, Carlisles, and others. And nearly all these names are today, that is 1910, represented in Fairfax County by the descendants of these original settlers. These were the men who two and a half centuries ago marked the bounds of the homesteads, laid the hearthstones, established the neighborhoods, and assisted in erecting the altars of a great commonwealth. And in the particular case of the Coffer family, their history in the Burke area began even before Fairfax was founded with a 1728 land grant to Fair Francis Coffer I by Lord Fairfax. The Coffer family then acquired more land as generations of Coffers made their mark on Burke and Fairfax County. The second generation of Coffers included Thomas Withers Coffer, who served as vestryman at Poet Church with George Washington himself. He had pew number five, right behind the pews of George Mason. The third generation of coffers continued expanding their land holdings and service to the community. Francis Coffer III served as a founding member for Fairfax City in 1805. The coffer wealth continued to grow, and so did their holdings of slaves. 
Here is an advertisement from Francis Coffer III to regain his runaway slaves. The 1817 will of Francis Coffer III introduced the slave woman Phyllis Pearson in the story of Little Zion Baptist Church. He wrote that, quote, the Negro girl named Phyllis should go to his daughter, Catherine Coffer, who would live with her brother, Francis Coffer IV, until she got married. Francis Coffer IV took over ownership of Phyllis Pearson, and his wealth continued to grow, including slaves listed in the 1850 slave schedule. Based on that 1850 slave schedule, Phyllis was 45 in 1850, at the time that Francis Coffer IV was 67. So Phyllis was around 12 or 13 when Francis Coffer III made his 1817 will. That will provided a home for Phyllis and her mistress Catherine, as long as Catherine was not married, in the home that was willed to Francis Coffer IV. Based on the ages of her four sons, the relationship between Phyllis and Francis Coffer IV lasted for over 35 years by the time Francis Coffer IV died in October of 1861. Andy's will demonstrated real concern for the welfare of Phyllis and their four sons. Francis Coffer IV was one of the richest and most prominent landowners in Burke in 1860. Marriage between Phyllis and Francis the Coffer IV would have been out of the question in Virginia at that time. But why did Francis Coffer IV wait until after his death before making his children freed men? Since he clearly cared for his sons with Phyllis, I believe that Francis Coffer IV wanted them to live with him as long as he is alive. If he had freed them earlier, then the racist laws of Virginia would have required his children and Phyllis to live Virginia within the year of their freedom, and they would probably need to move to a northern state. So he devised a will that provided freedom from servitude for Phyllis and their four sons. He also wanted to make sure that they had freedom to move to a different state if they so chose. He stipulated that the lands, the 300 acres plus the 74 acre tract, were to be sold within two years of his death and that the revenues were to be given to Phyllis and the four brothers. One could say that Francis Coffer IV did his duty as a father to his family, particularly in consideration of the times they lived in. He wrote the will in May of 1861 after the Civil War had begun, and he died in October of 1861. With his family background in mind, I was a bit surprised to find that Francis Coffer IV voted for secession for Virginia. Because of the Civil War, the probate was delayed for the will of Francis Coffer IV until 1865. This had an adverse consequence for the Pearsons who had filed wartime claims for losses of timber in their inherited land. The Southern Commission denied the claim because of uncertainty about their ownership of the lands in question during the Civil War. This uncertainty was a direct result of the delay in the probate of the will of Francis Coffer IV. 